I'm King Lincoln, welcome back. It's almost the end of the year, so it's time to look at the Xbox Game Pass December 2021 review. Except, wait, I normally play the Xbox Game Pass for PC, but that's not actually a thing anymore. The thing is, I try to look at all the games for Game Pass, though I currently mostly play on PC, so I'm going to think about what I call this segment. But for this month, this is the PC Game Pass December 2021 review, or just the Game Pass December 2021 review. Take your pick. The two services as of now are so similar, the only real difference this month was Among Us, which is extremely fun with others, consider it reviewed. Also just a heads up, I have a Discord server now called The Roundtable, please check the description or the pinned comments for more details. With all that said, once again there's too many games for one video this month, so we're going to be breaking them up once again because I really don't think anyone wants to hear me talk about games for 40 minutes straight. 13 games this time, 13 games next time. So let's see what the first half has on tap. Starting with... XO1, using a gravity craft to explore the universe. XO1 starts with the player stuck on a desert planet with the ability to manipulate gravity. Increasing the gravity on a down slope and releasing it on a rising slope quickly turns this experiment into something magical. It's actions like this that make XO1 feels like a unique experience. From there, players are gaining a handful of different abilities, but the entire game is mostly exploring a series of interesting planets using unique controls, though there are a few twists involved. It's a solid experience that took me about two and a half hours, but players are already trying to speedrun this game. This is a very fresh experience that feels unlike anything that you've played before. Pick this up if you prefer novel concepts. There is a story here that was a little bit weak, but the gameplay here is worth checking out and I adored it. This is also created by a small team or a single person depending on how you consider it, but either way it deserves a lot of recognition for that. My Friend Pedro, an average action game with a strong story. My Friend Pedro focuses on a character who starts with amnesia, waking up in the back of a butcher's shop, and talking to a floating banana. While this does seem like a low random opening, there's a strange story here that will entertain and keep the player's attention over the 5 hour journey. It's just a shame that the gameplay doesn't do as much to engross the player. There's a handful of interesting scenes, levels, and mechanics, but that's like 5 or 6 really special levels over 40 or 50 levels. Otherwise, the gameplay is a little average. This game was developed to be for speedrunning or leaderboard chasing. Even if it looks like there's an amazing style here, it's a style that doesn't really change much over the levels. Pick this up if you like speedrunning or chasing the leaderboards. I gave this game a 7 out of 10 originally, and while it's fun, I probably would play something else now. Though, if someone had Game Pass and like 5 hours to kill, it would be fun to run through the story one time. It's just, coming back to this game, I'm noticing how there's only a few moments this game really reaches the highest level. Fate Tactics, Final Fantasy Tactics with more creatures. Fate Tactics is a strategy RPG with a focus on collecting and summoning monsters to fight alongside the player's characters. You play through a large series of levels and gain experience with every action you take. There's a large number of tactical skills, such as like using one character to assist another to improve their damage, then using a second character to create combo attacks so that first character gets additional attacks, stuff like that. Fate Tactics though is also a very slow game. Maps can take a long time to get through, mostly due to how spread out enemies are, and players usually have to focus on attacking only a few monsters at a time, while other monsters will hang out on the other side of the map. However, there is a lot to find in the game and collect on each map, so players who want to see everything will usually spend a lot of time exploring each location. Pick this up if you like strong strategy RPGs, or if you enjoy looking at all the different characters. But this is a slower burn. Each map can take a very long time, like some took me about 30 minutes, and there's points where players have to play through multiple maps to make any progress in the game. Still, each victory ends up feeling really good, but this will take a large amount of time for each play session. Next Space Rebel, a more casual version of Kerbal Space Program. Sitting at Next Space Rebels' Maker Window, their version of CAD, inspiration strikes. What if I build a rocket with the usual structure, but rather than one rocket, I start using two boosters, or three, or four, and within minutes, I can actually design a new rocket, build, and launch it, and from there, I quickly come up with other little tricks to add in. The speed of the entire process is great. Next Space Rebel only works in the two-dimensional plane, but allows players to quickly design rockets with less complicated rules than Kerbal, while pushing players to keep launching rockets as fast as possible. The main mechanics of the game is to grow your StarTube channel, the YouTube version in the game, and then talk to various creators and people that will challenge you to different tasks and keep you growing your toolbox as you accomplish each goal. Pick this up if you enjoy the idea of Kerbal Space Program, even if you struggle with it. This is a scaled-down version of that game, but it also allows more interesting challenges at times. I've actually played more of this game and the story goes into a lot of interesting topics and overall I'm really happy with the experience and progression here. 
Undungeon, a stylish action RPG that kind of forgets the gameplay. I've struggled with Undungeon. I kept putting more and more time into Undungeon even though I wasn't really enjoying it. Finally, after about 6 hours, I really can't avoid this. Undungeon has a good look to the game, but the combat is so repetitive and enemies are mostly HP sponges that Undungeon struggles to find a true identity. There's a conversation system that reminds me of Disco Elysium, though with weaker writing, so it's more of a whiff of that system. So much of Undungeon just comes off as a weaker version of something players would want to play. The result is a game that's very bland, but keeps players hooked because maybe around the next corner is something that will turn the game into something more exciting. After 6 hours though, I don't think that change is coming. Pick this up if you like melee and action RPGs. The combat is a bit repetitive, but there is a solid difficulty to the enemies. The gameplay though just never delivers something that stands out. There's nothing awful here, just a repetitive battle system that really never excites the player. Mortal Shell, another take on the Dark Souls franchise. Mortal Shell doesn't hide its influences. It's a Dark Souls game trying to be exactly like Dark Souls and it's not going to apologize for it, nor should it really have to. It doesn't have the depth or breadth of its predecessors, but it works hard to live up to it. It does a great job while adding in a new hardened technique that evolves the combat just enough to feel different. There's also large bosses and more. I'm not a huge Dark Souls fan, but I still enjoy some of those games in the pseudo genre, though Mortal Shell hasn't hooked me yet. The parry command feels really difficult to pull off, really beyond what it should be. The hardened ability flows better, but while I like the idea of having different shells to break up the fight, they're really amounting to a class system with around 4 classes here. Pick this up if you want a Dark Souls game, though I'd probably place this in the B tier of the genre. It's weaker and shorter, but if you want to play every Dark Souls game, this is one to check out. However, if you're not already a Dark Souls fan, this is probably one that won't change your mind. Deer Simulator, your average everyday deer games. Sorry, try to get all four of those E's in the title. A goat simulator type game in 2021. Goat Simulator was a major hit in 2014, and soon enough everyone was imitating that style for a while. Seven years have passed and the fad is gone, but Deer Simulator appears to be trying to revive it. It has the same outlandish premise, same zany style, and same feeling. It does a good job of trying to imitate the formula. But it's also short, like very short. I beat the entire game with all the achievements in around two hours. During that time, there were a few clever jokes, but not that many. Most of the time, it was just doing repetitive actions or trying to beat a rather challenging boss fight. Of course, the fact that it's based on such an old idea as Goat Simulator makes it feel a bit out of place. Pick this up if you always wanted more Goat Simulator, but this is a rather short experience. It's fine to play if you have Xbox Game Pass, but I don't know if I'd recommend picking it up otherwise. I don't know, I just never really got into the genre, but it feels like there could have been a few more solid jokes, rather than things that really never go anywhere in the game. Before We Leave, a hexagon city builder focused on restoring civilization. Before We Leave is a game heavily focused on resource placement and city building. Players need to develop cities on the island that they start as they aim to keep growing and expanding. After the first island, the game becomes a multi-island game and eventually you're able to travel to other planets. The entire game is focused on sharing resources through shipping lanes, so if Island 1 has iron and Island 2 has glass, a ship can transport those resources back and forth. One of the better features of Before We Leave is how often you just leave an island in a good state. There's not a lot of micromanagement required. If an island is producing a resource, it will likely continue to produce that resource almost forever, so players won't have to go back and tweak old areas unless they choose to. Pick this up if you like the sound of this. It's a very relaxed game with nothing playing against you or really attacking you, but it is an interesting game, pushing the player onward as they build up their resources and unlock new mysteries. The full game isn't the longest, and if you want a more traditional city builder, Humankind is still better, but Before We Leave is a fun experience for what it is. Microsoft's Flight Simulator. The most incredible, realistic flight simulator if you want that. Microsoft's Flight Simulator tries to create a one-to-one -one experience for the player. Players are given the ability to fly a variety of planes to anywhere in the world, pulling realistic data from Bing's map program and realistic physics based on the game. This isn't a game where you just fly your jets at record speeds, but one where you show off your control over your planes and try to practice takeoffs, landing, and just cruising. Microsoft Flight Simulator also has a variety of challenges if players need specific goals or things to do. This is also the Game of the Year edition, which is why I'm covering it, but it feels great. I'm actually playing with a controller because my joystick is unfortunately damaged, but it's not that awful an experience. However, if you're really into this, you probably already have a joystick, and there's even VR for players who want that. 
Pick this up if you love flying realistic planes. If you have a joystick or a yoke, this is an easy recommendation. Throw in VR for some more realism. However, it is exactly what it says on the tin. Flight Simulator. And you can see from the footage, it does it well. If you want more action, I would heavily recommend Project Wingman to players, but this is still excellent for those who will forego combat and instead want to master aeronautics. On a personal note, I grew up with planes. My dad loved to fly his own planes, and we would take almost weekly trips in his various planes, including a Cessna. The approach that I've been showing on the screen is one of his favorites into Danbury Airport, airport code of DXR. Truth is, I miss him, and I feel really close to him when I'm playing this game. There's something special about playing this game and how well it simulates flying. And yeah, I know it was a bad landing, but no assist, and I still walked away from it, so I think I got the Chuck Yeager seal of approval. Evil Genius 2, running your own empire, your evil empire. Evil Genius 2 will look like Dungeon Keeper, the old Dungeon Keeper before it turned into that mobile game, and that's intentional. You run a crime organization with henchmen, spies, and more. It's like playing Dr. Evil from Austin Powers and often as funny too. There's good humor, a decent story that will take you through the evolution of the base and organization, and a lot of fun little widgets to build with. But ultimately, this is pretty much like most city builders. There's not a ton of challenge, at least not in those first four hours, but there are fun and interesting tasks to do. Players will be attacked by spies, but they never really seem like a challenge to the player, and while I'm sure I could make a fortress that's comically bad for them to attack, as long as you don't make obvious mistakes, it's pretty easy to be overflowing with all resources. Pick this up if you like base building or dungeon builders. The feeling of being a villain feels great, and players will have fun with the motif. I'm sure there's some difficulty in the game, I just wasn't struggling personally, and the biggest penalty was having to wait for notoriety to clear, which only takes a few minutes. Mind Scanners Papers, Please while tackling the mind. Papers, Please was an amazing game, so a game similar to it sounds good. Mind Scanners tries to capture the same formula while trying to look at treating mental illness, yet the gameplay is more about mini games than anything deeper. Players have to choose who to declare insane and treat, and who to declare sane and let go. But most of the time, it feels almost like a crapshoot, and often the only difference is you get more money on the patients you treat. Mindscanners lasts for about 3-4 to four hours for a first playthrough, and for most of that time it's repetitive gameplay with none of the story really intertwining into it though. That story was why Papers, Please works so well. There's also almost no changes to the gameplay or rules over the course of the game. If only there was a spark of something interesting in the middle of the story rather than just bookends. Pick this up if you like what you've seen. The first hour of this game is interesting, it's just the same as the second and third, and after playing through the game once, I had no desire to return and try for a second ending, even if I could start in the middle. Lawn Mowing Simulator, the opposite of watching grass grow. The simulator genre has me interested. I love seeing all these games because I always am amazed at what new and unique ideas are going to be shown next. Lawn Mowing? You know what? Sure. And the biggest complaint I have is you start with riding mowers instead of starting with like a push mower and then a walking mower or such. But it's a very chill and relaxed game. You go mow lawns, you try not to damage the ground or wreck flowers, that's it. There's a lot of different locations to visit and a variety of challenges. Much of the game outside of the mowing is business management, which reminds me a lot of Construction Simulator 2015. Hire your employees, task them on jobs, and then they bring in money. The actual mowing has a bit of a zen feeling to it as well, so it's good in that respect. Pick this up if you like simulator games or relaxing games. Maybe it's me, but I enjoyed myself with this game. It's not going to be a big bang, pow, zoom action scene, but it also doesn't have to. At the end of the day, mowing a lawn can be enjoyable too. The Hunter Call of the Wild, the ultimate stealth game. It's peaceful to walk around the woods thinking about stuff and enjoying the wilderness, but then you hear an animal call and suddenly you're thinking, I'm gonna go kill that. That's the hunter in a nutshell. The core of the game is hunting animals across various locations and attempting to make amazing kills. The big thing is, this isn't an action game. You can stake out a location and let the animals come to you, or you can stalk them down, but ultimately it's about trying to avoid animals sensing you and getting off a perfect shot. Think every sniper or stealth mission ever. And for what it does, it's well done. But the majority of the game is an open world, so you're gonna have to choose what to hunt, though there are quite a few choices here. Pick this up if you like stealth or hunting. I had a great time with this game, but it's also decently hard. Animals will sense you at a good distance, and a big piece of it is trying to find them before they find you. Still, if you can avoid rushing it, there's a lot of fun to be had here. That's 13 titles, and that's what I have for this week. But there's still 13 more titles to come next time, as well as the strongest games of the month. 
I honestly don't know which is going to be picked as I write this, but I will say that there are a few on this list that's probably going to be on it. And yet we still have Anvil, Stardew Valley, Generation Zero, Final Fantasy XIII 2, Rubber Bandits, Townscaper, Archvale, Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator, Sirius Sam 4, One Piece Pirate Warrior 4, and Aliens Fire Team Elite. Oh, and some random game called uh, Halo Infinite? How could that one be good? As I was editing this video, a list of games leaving the Game Pass service soon on December 31st, 2021 was announced. While I'm not sure the status of the PES series truly, it appears Konami has actually been moved to a free-to-play version of their newest release called eFootball 2022. The first three Yakuza games though are a huge loss to the service. I'm a massive Yakuza fan if you don't know, though I do recommend buying the games to support RGG. Those devs are great. If you want to try it before it leaves the service though, time is definitely running out and you might want to get to it because these are meaty games but well worth playing. Before I go, I do want to mention that I now have a Discord server called The Roundtable. If you're interested, there's information in the description and likely a pinned comment. It's a relaxed place to hang out, talk games, talk movies, really talk about anything you want. It's intended to be as much as your server as it is mine. And last month was great with tons of new viewers, so I really appreciate it. Keep sharing those videos with others, that makes a huge difference on YouTube, and it's what keeps this going. Your support means oh so much to me. Of course, I have to say it, if you're new here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell if you want to be notified of my new videos. If you can, like or dislike however you're feeling, and comment, it all helps the channel grow as I'm sure all of you know. I'll pop up two videos here, the humble choice for December 2021, and last month's Xbox Game Pass review. Remember when it was called Xbox Game Pass for PC? Ah, such a long time ago. <laughs> See you next time.